shows. Available everywhere podcasts. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. We are in the home stretch of the show and thus the week. Hope you guys have enjoyed all the shows this week thus far. Well, we are sticking in the realm of linebackers, and we are sticking with someone who, if you want a quote-unquote stat pattern in terms of tackles, this might be your guy. He's been killing it down there in Jacksonville in a defense that's rapidly improving like I talked about yesterday when I talked about Josh Allen at the linebacker position. This guy certainly is someone that you have to keep your eye on. And that is Foye Oluwoku. Like I said, in the Jacksonville defense, you have a 3-4 linebacker setup. You have a Josh Allen. who's a blitzer. Have a Devin Lloyd as a cover man. And you have Trayvon Walker, who's kind of a run stopper or in blitzer hybrid. In there, you have one of the best pure tacklers in the league. It's very rare that when you have four linebackers who are specific traits, that one of them is so fantastic in terms of the tackle and playing the tackle and playing the ball that it really opens up everyone else. I really think the sky's the limit for this Jaguars linebacking core. And the reason why is because of Foyo Luokun. Let's talk about his fantasy stats because these are impressive. 840.3 fantasy stats accrued in this season. 149.2 in 2022. 128 solo tackles last year for all you welcome. 12 tackles for loss, 2 sacks, 5 passes defended. 487 tackles over the past 5 years. Now, a lot of you might be saying, well, aren't you kind of saying that balance at the linebacker position really wins you games. Here's why I think that Oli Wilkins' game is more nuanced than just being one of the best pure tacklers in the NFL. The speed, athleticism, and power that he brings to the position really wears a lot more different hats than you think. It might not show up in the stats outside of tackles. It might not necessarily be seen by the naked eye. But it certainly doesn't mean that Oluwokun can't be someone who is in and around the play in more ways than one. Solid tacklers at the linebacker position. The reason why they're so highly coveted is because especially in 3-4 systems, People know that in 3-4 systems, each and every single linebacker is going to be special. There's always going to be that one guy who is going to have the best stats out of all of them. And I said yesterday that Josh Allen had the best stats out of any of them. But the reason why I also want to mention Oli Wilkun is because Devin Lloyd and Trayvon Walker haven't really lived up to the potential that we know we can have. Devin Lloyd, second year in the league, out of Utah, certainly kind of feels more like a corner to me. He doesn't necessarily, you know, feel like someone who can drop into the blitz. He's definitely someone who's rangy, and that could work in his favor in some areas of the linebacker position, but he doesn't necessarily feel much like a linebacker. So that's why I'm calling him more of someone who can help the coverage end of things. Whereas Trevon Walker, he's just, I'm not saying bust, but he's just not someone who I can really point out an area of his game that I would say he's dominant in. There's not really one or many attributes that I should say I'm comfortable and confident saying that Trayvon Walker is comfortable in. So that leaves us with Allen and Oli Wokum. We all know about Josh Allen, who's going to blitz the heck out of opposing offenses. He's going to get so many sacks. He's going to 
had his stats in many different ways. But at the end of the day, I really kind of see him as well as one of those guys who can help in terms of the pass rush as well because the Jags pass rush is so desperate. And that leaves Foyo Oluwogun. As the second best player in this position, Oluwogun is kind of in a weird place because in the grand scheme of the Jags defense, you're looking at a pass rush and secondary that's kind of trying to get up to the linebacking course level. So that definitely leaves a lot of confusion surrounding how the linebacking core is going to play. Because if you have Josh Allen helping in the pass rush more often than not, and you have perhaps Devin Lloyd transitioning to a more coverage-based role, and you have Trevon Walker, who's not really positively affecting either aspect, then how do you view Ole Wogan? He views himself, I believe, as a pure tackler. He views himself as someone who can stay more centrally and stop running backs or whoever getting to the second level. But it also definitely means that he has the freedom of choice. I feel like his power definitely translates more to the side of the game where he's stopping second level rushers. But at the end of the day, I feel as if Foyo Yowoku can become much more versatile than we think. This Jags defense isn't necessarily predicated on anything outside of these linebackers. They don't really have a center of attention as a pass rusher outside of Josh Allen. And the way I see it, only Woke now has the opportunity to say, hey, I'm in a weird position right now as a Jacksonville Jaguars linebacker. I have a guy in Josh Allen who off the weak side is always going to be around the quarterback, and I have two guys who are kind of inexperienced, one in Devin Lloyd, one in Trayvon Walker. Lloyd certainly feels more like he's going to cover guys. And Walker hasn't really been good for us. So that means I need to step up and decide how I want to play it. I always think that Foyo Oluwogun is first and foremost a tackler. He's always going to want to be a tackler as well. But I think that there's a wide open avenue for him to really kind of interpret the linebacker role more than anyone in the league. I believe so. And he's not the best coverage man. I'm, I'm not sitting here and telling you that Foy Oluwokun will immediately get five or seven interceptions. He definitely doesn't feel like that kind of player. But when I think about him, I'm thinking that if the Jacksonville Jaguars truly want to be an elite defense, if they want to get back to those days in the late that 2010s where they had dominant defenses that were predicated on these kind of linebackers. I really think that one of them has to become more versatile. I really think that one of them can't just be a one-trait player or a one-trick pony. And I mean, Josh Allen as the star of this linebacking core, I could have said that he really steps up, but at the end of the day, Josh Allen can play anywhere on the front, and he would immediately be the best edge rusher for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's weird that he's a linebacker even, because he plays so much like an edge rusher. It's crazy. So that means that in order to get the best out of your best unit. Foyo Yowokun's going to have to be the guy. And it feels weird to say. 
and it's kind of cliche because I'm sitting here telling you that in terms of pure tackling, he's a guy you would want. If you like tackles in IDP, he's the guy. But right now, the Jacksonville Jaguars are on the precipice of either having a foundation that works and solidifying it or having it all fall apart around them. I think Foyle while you're welcome, while definitely not the best linebacker, is the building block that everyone can revolve around. Because it will make it so much easier for both the pass rush and the secondary to improve if someone from the most solid unit on your defense knows that he can help in any way he can. And that's why Foya Wolyawoken is going to be one of the more intriguing players to follow as the season goes along. And that will just about do it for this segment. Coming next to finish up the show and the week, we switch from the linebacking core to cornerbacks. We talk about one of the best corners in the game in terms of the best secondary in the game. We'll be right back to conclude today's show and the week. <laughs> 